chapter 14 is all about our mineral resources and some geology review. So case study about gold does a great overview of kind of highlighting some of the effects of mining that you don't normally think of. Um, well, cyanide, which we know is a poison, is used in gold extraction, so that leads to a lot of water pollution. Um, and then there are a lot of horrible cases of um, child labor related to mining. So we'll talk more about that in class. The book doesn't get into that so much, but good case study. Read it. Um, all right, so the first section is a review of some of the geology that we did with Unit 1, okay, with the core and the mantle and the crust and plate tectonics and all of that. So we already did this in the Unit 1, as a reminder, but refresh your memory, make sure you understand the differences between continental and oceanic plates, divergent versus convergent versus transform boundaries, um, subduction zones, hot spots, all discussed in here, but review that as needed from unit one as well. And then something which we didn't talk about in, weather one, in unit one is weathering versus erosion. We've used these terms before. These are terms you've been using since probably upper elementary school, but keep in mind, Earth's surface is always changing because weathering breaks down rocks into smaller and smaller pieces, soil, etc. And then erosion is the movement of that material to other locations. Um, volcanic activity helps to create new land. Then we get primary succession. Um, weather lava is a great source of fertile soils. But again, it's primary succession, so it takes a really long time to get to those soils. And then eventually you can have plants growing there. And then there's also a little bit about earthquakes. So what you need to know about earthquakes is that basically all of the stress is building up between at the boundary of two plates. And then when there's a sudden movement, a lot of energy that's been stored is released and that sends vibrations through rocks. Um, and then that can lead to tsunamis. So figure 14.8 does a really nice job of explaining and showing how tsunamis form. Um, you guys are too young to remember, but in 2004, there was a major tsunami in the Indian Ocean that caused a lot of devastation, killed way too many people. Um, as you can see in figure 14.9 on page 353, kind of the before and after of what happened. Um, but just like we were talking about with climate change and rising sea levels, coral reefs and mangrove forests can help to slow waves that are coming and that can help to lessen the damage and the deaths from tsunamis. So as we change the landscape along the coasts, that can also put people at greater risks of these geological changes too. All right, 14.2 goes into the rock cycle a little bit. Review from probably middle school, you need to know sedimentary rocks, which is like accumulated layers, sandstone, limestone, shale, coal is a sedimentary type of rock. Um, igneous, which is from cooled magma, so granite, lava rock, or pumice stone, those are igneous rocks. And then metamorphic, which is has been changed by either extreme heat or pressure, like slate and marble. And the rock cycle, know the key events like weathering, erosion, heat and pressure, and then melting. And that's all shown in 1410. The bulk of what we need to focus our time on in chapter 14 is the rest of it.